into the recovery which it stands, one a nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. First thing I'd like to do is just make sure it's noted that Chair Finley Rathaus is excused for the evening. Okay, announcements. Unfortunately, I'm going to be doing a lot of reading tonight, so. And this is only the beginning. Okay. Town offices will be closed on Monday, February 20th, for the observance of President's Day. Upcoming town council meetings. Thursday, February 23rd at 7 p.m., Thursday, March 9th at 7 p.m., and Thursday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Important dates to remember, Wednesday, February 22nd through Friday, March 3rd at 5 p.m., filing period for town offices to be elected at the town meeting on April 11th, 2023. Wednesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. in the all-purpose room at James Master Cola Upper Elementary School located at 26 Babusik Lake Road is the deliberative session. Okay, the uh, comments from the... Do I do announcements for you first? Uh, yeah, I just have one. Madam Chair, yeah. thank you. Uh, Parks and Rec Department invites you to join them on Saturday, February 25th for the 31st annual Winter Carnival at Wasserman Park from 12 to 3 p.m. Despite the lack of snow on the ground, we have 26 groups providing free games, crafts, raffles, and other activities. We're ex anticipating a special appearance by Mac, the police comfort dog, as well as Oscar Meyer Wienermobile. Food will be available for purchase during the event. If you have any questions, please contact Parks and Recreation at 603 882 one zero four six or you can go to their website at merrimack parks with an s and recreation and rack.org that's merrimack parks and rack.org thank you comments from the press and public the crowd okay recognitions resignations and retirements none appointments none okay public hearings this is much of what's going on this evening um, first is a public hearing consideration of changes to Chapter 178 Taxation, Article 5, Optional Veterans Credit of the Merrimack Town Code. The Town Council will hold a public hearing to consider the acceptance of recommended changes to Chapter 178 Taxation. Okay, first of all, I will open the, council, uh, the public hearing at 7.03. See if there's any public comment. And as they rush to make a comment. Um, while they rush the microphone, um, basically this, what we're changing is Article 5 of the Optional Veterans Tax Credit. Um, the legislation last year voted uh, some additional language, and it's the additional language is to include eligible active duty veterans. We included that in our Optional Tax Credit. And the other reason why is that if the council did not take this up, the uh, veteran credit would go back to $50. But by readopting re this section of the ordinance 178, the 500 will stay in place now, okay. which was voted on prior by the residents of Merrimack. I apologize. I should have been on. Go ahead. Okay. Not seeing any public. Now does the council. I'm going to close at 704. The council. Have questions or recommendations or okay so Andy Hunter is going to recuse himself you can sit I don't think there's any reason sometimes when you recuse people want to be able to move but I don't feel a need for you to move unless anyone else feels the same way yes Barbara. just a question um, do veterans have to reapply for the credit every year or once they apply they applied and that's good once they get approved with their DD-214 and honorable discharge paperwork, it's in effect. Um, and then even after they pass, their spouse gets the credit as well until their spouse passes. So, no, they don't have to reapply every year. So, so what's the definition of an active duty veteran? He's been discharged, but he's working again? 
Um, it, that was to incorporate this optional credit for um, members who are in the National Guard that called up to active duty. That's really what the active duty was for, because National Guard members do not get a veteran credit. Okay, thanks. Barbara? And there are, I, that stopped me for a while too, because I was like cogitating on that, but I do know people who have discharged from one branch of the service and re-enlisted in a different branch of the service. So technically, yeah, they're a veteran, and now, but they're still on active they're duty active. in a different branch. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to move to consent agenda. Move. I, I move the, um, what is it, chapter 178 changes uh, to the uh, third reading consent agenda. Right. Second. Made by Tom, seconded by Barbara. Any further discussion? Seeing none, let's vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so there's five. And any against and abstaining? One. Andy. Or no, you're recused. Oh, just recused. Okay, so you just both those recused. Okay, so it's five zero zero. Andy had to recuse himself. Okay. Well, this is starting out really well. <laughs> okay, number two in the public hearing. Milfoil grant funds for Horseshoe and Natacook Lake. Submitted by Planning and Zoning Board Administrator Robert Price, but we have the big boss here, Jim Thompson. <laughs> the Town Council will hold a public hearing to authorize the acceptance and expenditure of up to $18,580 for the milfoil treatment program at Horseshoe Pond and Natica Lake, of which $9,290 is from a grant from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services for milfoil control, and the town's matching share is $9,290 to be funded from the Milfoil Expendable Capital Reserve Fund and to authorize the town manager or his designee to execute any and all documents which may be necessary pursuant to RSA 31-95-B and Charter Article 18-15. And I'm assuming, Paul, should we just um, go to you? This or is, Tim? well, we can push right off to Tim, but for, for people at home, um, we get this every year. This is one of those grants that comes back. Um, it's, nice to see, it's nice to see the funding going back to 50%, 50%. <coughs> because it used to be 40% state, 60% yeah. town. So um, it's nice to see that they're stepping up to the plate and paying a little more of the share. Tim? Thank you, Mr. Uh, town Manager, members of the council. Uh, this, as Paul mentioned, is a yearly process. Uh, DES works with uh, Robert and the staff in my department to go through the grant process. Uh, now with the Milfoil Expendable Capital Reserve Fund, it really has become almost a, an automatic process. Uh, the proposal for this year is for diver-assisted suction harvesting, uh, as it was for last year, and uh, DES is going to cover 50% of those costs. Excellent. Okay. Um, why don't we open up for discussion first? Tom? Well, I was just going to make a motion. Go right ahead. I move to accept Wait a and authorize. Wait a minute. We didn't do a public hearing. This, this is a public hearing? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, never mind. <laughs> you were just testing me. Yeah. <laughs> you caught me. No, I caught myself amazingly. Okay, um, any discussion though? None. Okay, now I will open up the public hearing at 709. Um, I will make a comment. A lot of times we've had the public come and make comments about how effective and how active they are in their involvement at Hush. Yeah, the volunteers at both of those bodies Amazing. of water are excellent. Absolutely. Very, very great people that assist the, uh, the company. And very that's much what makes so. it so effective. Exactly. Right? Okay. So I'll close the public hearing at 710. Now, well, now you're gonna let me entertain the motion. Madam Chairman, I move to accept and authorize the expenditure of up to $18,580 for the milfoil treatment program at Horseshoe Pond in Natticook Lake of which 9,290 is from a grant from NHDES for milfoil control and the, and the town's matching share is 9,290 to be funded from the milfoil expendable capital reserve fund. And furthermore, the town council authorizes the town manager or his designee 
to execute any and all documents which may be necessary. Second. Motion made, uh, made by Tom Koenig, seconded by Barbara Healy. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? None. Six zero zero. Thank you, Tim. Okay, the next, there are several uh, things to be discussed, warrant articles in the operating budget. How we're going to do is we're going to deal, it, deal with it individually. So we're going to do one at a time. And after each one, there'll be a motion. If, unless it's discussed, we'll have discussion and changes. And after all that, a motion will be entertained to move to the warrant. Okay, so we'll do those on an individual basis, okay? Okay, so the first one, again, this is public hearing, we have to remember. Public hearing, proposed municipal 23-24 operating budget and warrant articles. Town Council will hold a public hearing to discuss the following. The first is the 23-24 proposed municipal operating budget. Paul? Thank you, Madam Chair. Justin's coming out in a second, and it will populate on your screens. It is on our screens. Um, I gave you this handout so you can keep it in your budget books. Uh, it's right there for you, Madam Chair. So, um, so this is your backup for your budget book. So I come tonight uh, during the budget uh, public hearing to discuss the Merrimack Town Council budget. Um, it becomes the Merrimack Council budget uh, from the last meeting that we had when you moved all the money forward. It's your budget moving to the warrant and deliberative session from this point. Summary of the budget is um, an increase of roughly 16 cents on the tax rate um, about a $900,000 increase to taxes. It's about a 4.19% increase um, in the tax rate. Broken down further, um, appropriations. There are several different groups of appropriations. Uh, general fund operating, capital reserve funds, other capital, excuse me, road infrastructure and sidewalks expansion, safer grant, wastewater, and self-supporting. Safer grant, wastewater, and self-supporting are just that. They offset one another. Um, the ones above, if you add the, and we're, we're talking about the general fund operating, capital reserve fund deposits, other capital, and road infrastructure, that's about a 2,334,945% increase, or 7.1%. We've also had increases in revenue of 1439962 or 10.5%. Overlay, tax overlay for abatement is an increase of about $17,000 of 5.26%, 912.476 or 4.7% total increase to the amount to be raised by taxes. Tax rate, however, is about 4.19% increase or 16% for the budget article. Some of the appropriations um, that have increased, computer supplies went up about 45,000, street sweeping 16, general insurance 11. The big ones are solid waste tipping fees, recycling went up 52,005, disposal went up 20,500. Um, we're in two contracts with both of those, and those were, uh, the recycling was inflationary and what the contract was for the second year. Total is $73,000. Vehicle fuel, as we all know, vehicle gas prices have gone up. Uh, it's $99,500 from where we were. Uh, some telephone maintenance items, thirty-five, dollars and office maintenance items of $37,000. For staffing and, uh, staffing and personnel related expenses, health insurance went up $232,000. We still have working on a guaranteed maximum rate. We won't get our final rate till probably the end of March, I was told. Um, and it looks like we're gonna be right around that number. Uh, compensated absence went down at $100,000. Union wages for the three unions that are in contract went up 188,000. 
New Hampshire retirement system had a reduction in its rate that went down 177,000. Uh, some uniform costs associated with these contracts and union employees went up 16,000. Uh, additional for the SAFER grant went up $6,918 for this year. We got a COSAP grant for the police department, which is $110,000. Uh, Deputy Director of Environmental Position Upgrade of $40,000. That's the difference from where, when we re reclassified that uh, environmental position to the DPW, Deputy Director of DPW. Uh, overtime for fire and police went up about 44000 We had some reductions. We reduced a full-time detective secretary position uh, through uh, software acquisition uh, that eliminated that position of $71,000. Um, Town and Clark Tax Collector reduced the full-time position for about 64000 And nine union raises were about 186000 That's nine union raises and um, incentives and a little bit of uh, uh when we have to look at salaries for the non-union individuals for positions that are available. So that's all included there. Comes to 784,871 increase. We also had some savings. Debt service for drainage, 166,586. Library materials went down 22,000. Fourth of July went down 10,000. That's because the rotary came back and they are, they are stretched really thin again this year. So they're not gonna be doing the midway. So there will not be a midway. Um, and then some operating supplies decreased, net savings of 210086 total increase to general fund, 574785 That number ties to the where is it? first line, if you look at general fund operating, 567867 and you add in the safer grant to 6918 You add those two together, they come up to the 574,785 increase. Continuing on, increased cost is only half the story with the budget. Even though the voters don't vote on the revenue in April, um, when we look at our budget, it's a, it's a all-inclusive budget for include revenues. We had some increases to revenues this year. Um, as I told you about uh, solid waste, the solid waste revenue also went up 190,800. And that is reflected in the rates that we do charge uh, commercial vendors for bringing uh, materials to the, town, to the town transfer station. Interest income, the interest rates are on the rise, $261,000. The COSAP grant that we talked about, offset by the police department expense of 110. Uh, charges for services went up 69,150. Restaurant licenses, we, we are following the state. The state proves what the restaurant fee uh, license amounts are, and that's $17,000. We had some miscellaneous income, you know, ebbs and flows of $46,000. Uh, some decreases, though, were uh, current use taxes of fifty, dollars building permits of $64,500. State revenue sharing for New Hampshire retirement. Last year, they gave us a one-time, even though it's being talked about in the budget right now, we do not know if we're going to get it or not, uh, but they gave us a one-time uh, reduction in police and fire. They helped us with the police and fire retirement costs for the town of to the tune of 181 260 net revenue increases is 398 544 safer grant like i said before was an increase of $6918 we used some fund balance this year in the amount of 2,384,500 984,500 was used to reduce taxes the $1.4 million was used for the fuel distribution system that we talked about at Highway Garage. So there's an offsetting revenue for that capital expenditure. Overall, we increased fund balance, use of fund balance 1034500 As you can see from prior year, the $2,384,500 minus the, what we have in this current budget that we're in right now of $1,350,000. So it's an increase of 1,034,000, excuse me. Um, other highlights are some the capital that we talked about. We talked about uh, a town hall sprinkler system, and that is not for outdoor watering. That is actually for fire suppression in the amount of $150,000. We talked about that, that our system is getting older. It's showing its age. It's having, we're having more and more leaks and more and more repairs. Um, church parking lot of 92,424. 
Um, we also, that also is for the church across the street. Um, it's part of our lease agreement with them. However, they are paying about uh, $50,000 of that. So really, the uh, net cost of the town is about $49,000, 42 dollars to $49,000. Uh, community development is not buying a planned file cabinet. Um, communications, 800 megahertz system. We put money in the 22-23 budget. We're not uh, um, putting that forward again of seven hundred and. $62,000. There's the highway fuel distribution of $1.4 million. A brine storage tank, that's so that uh, we use less salt in, in some areas of town where there are wellhead protections. We need a, a tank to store the brine. That's $25,000. Uh, we had a base radio at the highway garage for their communications of $28,000 that we're not buying again this year. When I talk, say this year, it's 23-24 versus the current fiscal year is 22-23. Um, we talked about an office trailer at uh, wastewater. Um, the side by the scale is starting to rot. Um, and then we're not doing parks and rec roofs for 32,000. And we talked about some police vehicle outfits and new, the cost of police vehicles of 2,800. Uh -huh. okay. uh, I just wanted to go back to the, uh, the church parking lot and yeah. just make it very clear to people that we're not paving the lot for the church. We're paving the lot for the, our use at the adult community center. Uh, as part of our lease agreement with the church. And the church, as you pointed out, is paying the majority of that amount, but we have to gross budget the whole amount. Uh, so we're only paying about 40 something thousand. Right. I think it's like 46,000. Yeah. It just yeah. just so nobody thinks that we're going around and paving the church parking lot right. for them or something like that. No. We're, this is a definitely a business deal with them. Yeah. Th thank you for clarifying that, Councilor Koenig. Uh, yes. This is a lease agreement that we have with them for parking. Uh, for the adult community center and that's what we're looking at restoring um, and paving as part of the lease agreement um, so other capital is an increase of 960,000 road infrastructure that's our paving budget is increasing eight hundred thousand dollars in fiscal year 23-24 um, that is all that I have on the budget, I'll be more than happy to answer questions. Questions from the council? We will reopen the public hearing at 722. Thank you. Oh, I don't have it on. Okay, why don't I... Um... Let it move, so let me close the public hearing at 723. I will entertain a motion. I move a, an amount of $38,791,564 for the operating budget to the town warrant. Second. Motion made by Tom Koenig, seconded by Lon Woods. Any further discussion? Saying none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All in Affirmative, so that's six zero zero. Thank you. Thank you. And, okay. I forgot, and I forgot to mention, department heads are here. Yes. They're in full support of this budget that's being presented to the town from the town council. Um, they're here to show that they are in support of it. So, uh, and they were here to answer any questions, but I forgot to say that at the beginning. So, Thank you, and I appreciate you said that. And I just want to make a point is that I made a decision they didn't have to be here. But they wanted to come. And they wanted to come, so I appreciate it even more, since you didn't have to when you still should have. So. Well, <laughs> it is their budget, but it also says a lot that they're supporting it, so we appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so we can go on to the next one. Next one, yep. Okay. The next uh, up here is collective bargaining agreements. Should we do each one of those individually as well? Or yep. three yes, together? Please. Yes, okay. please. The first is the International Association of Firefighters, IAFF, Local 2904. And Paul, go right ahead. Um, first, I want to say is that uh, we're presenting this information as that an informational um, presentation for the public. Uh, union contracts, once they're agreed to and ratified by both sides, the, the union and the town council, move automatically to the warrant and actually to the ballot. Um, they cannot really be changed uh, because it's a agreed contract, and it, the people the people have to vote on what was agreed to 
by the council and by the union. But we want to get it out there to show what the council has ratified. So um, IFF 2904 has 36 members. We settled on a three-year deal totaling 361768 The first year includes a three-year wage increase. And plus, we added the EMT, AAMT, Parasert, Firefighter 2, and Longevity into the base pay of the, the position and added a $0.10 cent adjustment to bring them closer to the average of surrounding communities. So similar size. In year two, it's a straight 3% wage increase. In year three, it's a straight 3% wage increase. We also had a couple of other items that we talked about um, that uh, we increased some uniform items in paragraph five and eight and reduced the prorated allowance for, for a probationary employee from $70 per month to $50 per month. Um, we did the article, paragraph five and eight are summarized in the bullet below it's some additions and subtractions to uniform items issued by firefight to firefighters and paramedics when hired that could be uniform pants that could be shirts that could be t-shirts um, winter coat things of that sort um, we had it very specific that for instance they can only have two pairs of pants well these guys are in probation they're training the pants get wet they go they have the second pair of pants they get wet again. Now they don't have another pair of pants to wear. So we increased that allotment for pants. The other, the same thing with shirts because they're training and they're learning the equipment and things of that sort. We, we gave them an additional um, shirt allotment for like t-shirts and things of that sort. But on the other side, the union came and when we talked about it said, we're going to reduce the monthly because you're giving us more upfront. So we don't have to spend it to buy those pants and things of that sort. The other thing is paragraph three of the insurance line, life insurance. Uh, we're trying to standardize life insurance throughout the town, um, increase benefits to one-time salary for employees, 10,000 for spouse, 5,000 for children, from 10,000 an employee, 1,000 from a spouse, and 500 or $100 for a child under six months. So we're trying to standardize that across the board. Costing is a 3% wage increase plus benefits comes to 93,796 in year one. Year two, um, year one costing for the 10 cents, enrolling all those um, certificates and, and incentives into it was 32,723. Uh, overtime was at 13,598. Uh, steps, because this uh, union contract has steps was 14,300. Totaling year one's 154,367, or roughly three cents on the tax rate. Year two of the contract is 97,000 for the 3% increase. Steps is another 9,500 for a total of 106,788, which is two, two cents on the tax rate. Year three is 100,613. Um, right now with the current employees and the current staffing they have, um, there will not be any steps. Um, and the cost is 100613 for a total three-year total contract of 361768 or roughly seven cents over those three years on the tax rate. That is all I have. I'm sorry. Open public hearing. Yep. I was just about to. <laughs> okay, I'd like to open the public hearing at 728. Uh, we should have music while we wait a couple of moments. <laughs> Da, da, da. Okay, seeing nothing, I'm going to close the public hearing at 729. What's the pleasure of the council? I'd like to make a motion. Absolutely. Okay, I move to, uh, to move $154,367 for collective bargaining agreement between the town and the IAFF contract to the town warrant. Motion made by Barbara Healy, second by Andy, Andy Hunter. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Tom. we're just moving the cost number for the... For the one year to the warrant. For the one year... Because that's really we're moving the entire contract to the warrant, aren't we? Yeah, yeah we, we move the entire contract, but we have to move the cost item because the voters are voting on that first year of the cost. We have to show them by RSA what the additional cost of the contract is in that warrant article. 
but really what we're looking for when we write the warrant is to raise and appropriate 154367 for this union agreement to increase the 34 38 million 791 but the three years will be presented it has to be it will yeah. be presented it will be presented on the on, on the warrant the yes yeah yeah any okay. further questions okay all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed none six zero zero okay next american federation of state county and municipal employees 98 local 3657 Thank you. This contract is with the ASME 93 Local 3657. This, uh, this union is the police and fire supervisors. It has 16 members in this bargaining unit. We reached a four-year deal totaling 372,796. Um, in the first year, it's a 3% three, three, 3 wage increase with a $2 per hour adjustment to move employees in this bargaining agreement closer to the average of comparable communities. According to this. We also incorporated paramedic stipend into the base rate for fire captains and lieutenants, similar to what the local firefighter union has. In year two, we did a 3% wage adjustment, a 3% wage increase, sorry, with a $1.50 per hour adjustment for fire captains, once again, to move them closer to the average of comparable communities. Um, in year three, it was a 3% yeah. wage increase with a dollar per hour adjustment for fire captains and a 50 cent adjustment for police captains and lieutenants to move those employees closer towards the average of comparable communities. And in year four, it's just a straight 3% wage adjustment. Um, when we started to negotiate with this union, uh, this union, we found that our fire captains um, were under paid compared to other communities comparable size so that is why we're doing these adjustments we're trying to get these people more towards the average and working with this union the union understood the high end and low end and they they understand the tax rate implications and they were comfortable with moving over a number of years and not wanting to be at the average in the first year but being close to the average by year three year four and this accomplishes that goal um, really, there was no other contractual items. We just really talked about wages in this to move forward. Um, in year one, the 3% wage increase is 55663 uh, The wage adjustment, that $2 wage adjustment, was 92715 Total overtime and benefits were 5563 In the first year, 153941 total cost, and that's about 3% on the tax rate. Sorry, it says year one again. It should say year two. Um, a three percent wage increase is fifty-seven eight eighty. Um, wage adjustment and benefits is eighteen one seventy-nine for a total of seventy-six oh fifty-nine. Year three is sixty thousand two thirty-two. Wage adjustments and benefits is twenty thousand five twenty-five for eighty thousand seven fifty-seven. And year four, straight wage adjustment of three percent is sixty-two oh thirty-nine. Total contract is. 372,796, um, $0.09 cent increase overall for those four years. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.33. Okay, seeing none, let's move a minute. I'll close at 7.34. Council, yes, Andy. Madam Chair, I'd like to move one hundred fifty-three thousand nine hundred forty-one dollars for collective bargaining agreement between the town and ASFCME thirty-six fifty-seven to the town warrant. Second. Motion made by Ann Danter, second by Lon Woods. Any other questions or recommendations? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Six zero zero. Okay, the next item, American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME 93, Local 2986. Paul? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, 
this member is uh, the DPW laborers of Highway Solid Waste Equipment Maintenance and Wastewater. Um, 2986 has 40 members. Um, it's, we came to agreement on a three-year deal totaling 375329 um, When negotiating this contract, um, there were a couple items that uh, really we needed to adjust. Um, one was adjusting the pay scale. Um, as you know, we were, we were down five uh, highway equipment operator ones in, um, over at the highway garage. And during some of our interviews and, and people were inquiring about the position, the first thing they looked at was the wages. Um, and in looking at our wages, we saw that um, our pay scale um, was definitely on the low, on when the higher was on the low side. So we came to an agreement to slide the pay scale two steps and add two and a half percent between year 10 and 15 year employees and, be, and between year 15 and 20 year employees, the top two steps. We put, we, we made a 2% difference um, so that there's a, a progression of 2% as you move up from year 10, a 10 year employee to a 15 year employee and a 15 year employee to a 20. Um, by sliding the scale uh, in the first year, those two steps, it gets us almost to where we needed to be, kind of like the same agreement that we had with the previous union. This union, we came to agreement that we're being underpaid a little bit. We can't get you all there in the first year, but we'll get you there over the life of the contract. So in year two, we're sliding that pay scale. We're taking that bottom step and moving it out and moving every one of the steps down one uh, but between and between years 15 and 20, it's a 3% gap from those those two years, and then a 3% wage increase, and then in year three, a 3% wage increase. We also added a new classification for our equipment operator threes at wastewater, a sewer crew, um, and we added 50 cents to the equipment operator three pay scale. Um, the reason why we added this position is that the gentlemen who are on the sewer crew uh, need special certifications to be able to run our camera system that we have. So uh, by doing that, and there's some computer work that's a little more intricate than just being a regular equipment operator three. Um, hours of work and overtime, it was a clarification of hours of work and overtime with this union. Um, basically, we agreed to uh, outside the normal work schedule, um, they'll get overtime, and but there's no pyramiding for overtime if a holiday or things of that sort, uh, cleaning up some language. Uh, wastewater on call, we added this language. Um, any new employee um, hired after February 1st, oh, wait, sorry, wrong one. Um, we added language for employees shall be paid two times um, if they're on call, that's what it was. Two times their hourly rate if they're on call um, on an observed holiday. Uh, because these people, if their family goes away to their in-law's house and it's more than X amount of miles away, they actually have to stay home in case they get called in during a holiday. So it was to say thank you and uh, for being on call on holidays and, and trying to help satisfy the the lack of family getting together on a holiday um and then we this is what i was talking about before. we require we required that all new hires and those promoted or transferred into wastewater positions need to be put on the on-call schedule as of february 1st 2023 as part of the rotation right now it's voluntary for this group but uh we're trying to get more of these um 2986 members to get on the on-call schedule um, so that you're not on call every three or four weeks. When these gentlemen come in, we'll start being on call every six, eight, ten weeks to give a little bit more time because you're on call for seven days in a row, and that includes weekends. So for that period, you're on call and, you, you know, you get called. And it was it's getting better with our $32 million upgrade but we still have some very old equipment that we're still replacing. So they break down during the middle of the night, they get called, they gotta come in to fix it. 
with our newer systems, there will be a lot more computer stuff that they could do at home. Um, and like I said before, we're trying to get the life insurance benefit all to the same. So we're changing them as well to one-time salary plus 10000 for spouse and 5000 for child. Uh, from 10,000 employee, 1,000 spouse, 500, 100 for children. Um, and then, once again, the vacations, we amended the language in the contract to state that newly hired employees eligible for vacation as successful completion of a six-month probationary period. The town of Merrimack has a six-month probationary period. We're just trying to get everybody on the same benefit package and, and when benefits start. So they were a year. And that was the other thing when we're trying to hire positions, we heard, I don't get a vacation for a year? Really? <laughs> so we went with what, the rest of the language, six months probationary period. And then we increased their clothing allowance from 300, uh, from 275 to $300. Cost in the first year to move the two steps is 109,963. Because this union is without a contract in the current fiscal year, 22-23, we have to now place everybody who's supposed to get a step this year that did not get a step on the step they're at, going to be at. So that's another 50192 in year one. Equipment operated three benefits was 2593 for a total of 162478 or roughly three cents on the tax rate. Uh, three percent wage increase, and moving that one step is one hundred and thirty thousand one sixty seven in year two. That's the total cost as well. And in year three, three percent wage increase flat is eighty two four one four. Total three year of this contract is three seventy five. Excuse me, three twenty nine or roughly seven cents on the tax rate. You okay? Yeah. Are all done, Paul? Yes. Okay. I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.42. Okay. It's not going to be a full minute, but I'm going to say close the public hearing at 7.43. Okay. Any uh, discussion? Or? Madam Chair. Yes, oh. Nancy. Oh, I just wanted to make a motion. Go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to move $162,748 for collective bargaining in agreement, uh, for, excuse me, for collective bargaining agreement between the town and AFS CME 2689 to the town warrant. Um, so I just want to correct that, the 29, number. 86, it was please. written down incorrectly, so. Yes, yes. 2986. Yes. Okay. AFS CME 2986. Two nine eight six to the town There you go. Motion made by Nancy Second. Murphy, seconded by Tom Koenig. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? None. Okay. Six zero zero. I just like to make a personal comment to the all of the uh, unions that I th I appreciate the negotiations that went on. I think part of what the public needs to know is that there was an acknowledgement that some of our positions, it's competitive. It's that kind of surprise to no one that um, having public employment and private employment, there's that tension between the two and also between towns, how much you firefighters, police get paid. So there was an acknowledgement that we were lower than the, than the average, and that's what a lot of the negotiations was about. And I think the union appreciated, appreciated us acknowledging that and did that modification based on it. So I think it was a very fairly negotiated contract on both sides. And I really want to express my appreciation to the unions for that. And that's what these contracts, um, and it was give, give and take along the way. And we did, they do not, they're not at the top and they're no. certainly not at the bottom, but we wanted to make sure there was an acknowledgement. So we want to thank you for that. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you will give a positive consideration on voting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next capital reserve deposits, general fund. Um, as, as you know, in years past, um, this changed maybe three or four years ago where our capital reserve funds have to be 
voted on separately from the operating budget. Um, this year, I am not proposing any increases to the capital reserves um, in light of um, the economic factors that we were hearing at the time. Um, so we're asking for $1,947,250 um, for general fund capital reserve deposits. They include a liability trust fund, ambulances, communication equipment, computer equipment, Daniel Webster Highway, fire equipment, highway equipment, library buildings maintenance fund, property revaluation account, saw solid waste disposal, uh, traffic light preemption device, um, GIS, road infrastructure, athletic fields, and mill foil for an amount of 1947250 Can I get an open the public hearing at 745? So it's nice when you do have used it sometime. Okay, and it just turned. Close the public hearing at 746. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, first of all, any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Go ahead, Lauren. Madam Chair, I move that uh, 190, 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1,947,250 for the general fund capital reserve to the town warrant. Motion made by Lawn Woods, second by Barbara Healy. Any further discussion? Tom? So I just wanted to uh, kind of amplify a little bit of what Paul was saying, that this is something we've been doing years and years and years now. Um, and it allows us to save up for major expenses that we know we're going to have. In fact, we've been able to use them recently for the purchase of fire trucks. We use them periodically for ambulances and for uh, various assorted other things that are listed here. Um, and so I just want people to understand that, that yeah, you could, you could cut you know, 1.9 million out of the cost of the town's tax rate. However, that would be cutting your nose off to spite your face. We're, we're using these funds to avoid having to bond, to avoid having to come up with uh, big swings in the budget from year to year and things of that nature. So I encourage you to look at that. We have the option as a town council to split these out and make each of these a separate warrant article. Um, the town council has felt in the past that that was not appropriate. It makes the budget, the, the, the too ballot onerous. too long. Yeah. And people have generally been supportive of these. Um, and so we hope you will support them as well this year. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's, and I, every year I think the same thing, especially at the deliberative session. I view these as savings accounts. So I totally agree with what you're saying. Any other comments? I would just add the benefit of having some of these projects shovel ready. How many times have we been able to take advantage of a grant because we have this money saved up and we're ready to go on a project immediately and we don't have to worry about going and appropriating the funds. Um, and so I think it gives us opportunity that some other communities can't take advantage of. Agreed. Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed saying none, six zero zero. Okay, we're getting there. Capital Reserve Deposits, Wastewater. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, wastewater, we're looking to increase Wastewater Capital Reserve Fund Deposit $50,000 to $550,000. Um, the reason being is that we, like I said, we have a $32 million upgrade going on. Um, we also have some older equipment still in some of our pump stations, and um, we felt that it would be best to take these pump stations as a um, one-off projects instead of trying to bond it and paying it over, you know, 15, 15 20 years um, to use the capital reserve funds because we do have money in there for, for that purpose, to pay cash for repairing some of those um, pump stations, telemetry, things of that sort. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to show people at home this is of the projected projects that we have going on for these capital reserve, fund, capital reserve fund deposits. For instance, next year, we're looking at an, another ambulance, looking at um, body cameras for, for police officers. Um, 
the sprinkler system at the library needs to be upgraded and or, or repaired and we're looking at things of that sort um, we buy trucks, you know, one ton dump trucks, three quarter ton dump trucks. Um, you know, we're looking at paving DW Highway. Uh, we're looking at upgrading the Penichuk sewer pump station. We're looking at buying a, a, excuse me, a new loader at the compost facility. Totaling about $3 million worth of the money that's saved up over a number of years. And, and that's to Councilor Koenig's point, by saving that money, we're not spiking the tax rate by having to increase our budget by $3 million because we have the money saved up for these projects and we have been looking at it. And we utilize our capital, our capital improvements plan, which is a six-year plan, so we know what's coming up in the next few years and that's what these deposits are. They're broken up so we can save over a number of years amount of time for those projects, such as a fire engine or an ambulance or um, storage upgrades in our computer systems and things of that sort. So thank you for letting me digress a little bit. And we also don't have to bond. So yes. we don't have to have an interest to it. Right, exactly. We don't have to go out and get a $3.2 million bond to pay for those capital needs. Okay, but we still are, obviously. We need to do a motion. First of all, I have to open up the public hearing yes. for this. Uh, the Capital Reserve Deposit Waste Water at 751. I open up the public hearing for that. And I'm going to close it at 752. Okay, now any questions no. about the specific? Madam yes. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, my motion is to move the $550,000 for wastewater capital reserve fund to the town warrant. Motion made by Barbara Haley, second by? Second. Tom Koenig. Any questions? Paul, did you mention the tax impact of this capital reserve deposit? I, this On sewer infrastructure capital, there is no impact to the tax rate. This is 100% paid by sewer users. Um, and it's included in the rates that uh, the sewer users pay. Um, this is rolled into those rates. Talk about feeding him a good question. Well, I, you know, I, every time, I, every once in a while, you got to give him the softball. You know. <laughs> but the point is, it has no tax impact. There, there is no, no tax impact for this. Exactly. this. Whenever we talk about wastewater, and parks and rec, and, and some of those things we're talking about, what do you call those? Self-supporting funds. Self -supporting but this one, funds. this right. one's an enterprise fund, which enterprise. means that which is they have to have the money. Self-sufficient. It's it's like its own corporation inside right. the town. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. No other questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Six zero zero. And then for public service announcement, yep. deliberative session is March fifteenth. Uh, at 7 p.m. at James Mastropola Upper Medical, ah, James Mastropola <laughs> Upper Elementary School in the all-purpose room. And then annual voting day is th Tuesday, April 11th at 7 to 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at three polling locations, James Mastropola Upper Elementary School, St. John Newman Church, Merrimack Middle School. Um, if you do not know which polling location, uh, you can go on the Secretary of State's website, and it will be there, or you can follow the links on the town's website in the town clerk tax collector uh, for that, um, for your polling location. Thank you. There are no petitioned bonds, nor are there any petition warrant articles submitted. Wow. We're about 80% down. I want to thank the department heads again, and they can go. And they home can and, be relieved. Thanks right. again for coming, everyone. You could, as they're smiling and leaving. Notice how mom looks like they pick up this. <laughs> Okay, legislative update from state representatives. I've received nothing, Paul, have you? Um, no, I haven't received anything um, email-wise. I can double-check, but I well, know that. I counts, haven't either. And, but Nancy Murphy, Murphy Representative have... Murphy, would like to say a few, few words. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to provide an update about a bill that I had mentioned um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, House Bill 614 was a bill I filed back in um, November. Um, and the goal of the bill um, on behalf of our community originally, as originally drafted, was to require our Department of Health and Human Services to collect data for Merrimack, uh, town of Merrimack um, regarding the health impacts um, that we're seeing here, we're hearing at least anecdotal evidence of and um, the issues that are being raised of concern about health impacts known to be associated with PFAS exposure. And since we do have a higher, um, uh, you know, more, a higher exposure than many other towns and a cancer report that was just done in, um, was just updated in January and the information released um, which shows that Merrimack um, has an increased, uh, or they call it an excess number of kidney and renal pelvis cancers. Um, I was concerned about the public health impacts of the exposure we've had. Um, so the bill was originally written to collect comprehensive data, which would have addressed a lot of things like thyroid disorders and um, those kinds of things, as well as the cancers and, and other um, health impacts. Um, the division, uh, excuse me, Department of Health and Human Services said, met with me. We we discussed this a number of times, and the issue for them was that it was an overwhelming task, and there there are a number of foundational sort of steps that have to take uh, uh, precedence and have to happen first. So I redrafted that bill, and it, uh, it the, when it the last um, uh, draft made this bill a purely focused on the kidney cancer because um, we didn't have that information back in November. So it was, um, it is a $500,000 appropriation to the Department of Health and Human Services solely to uh, complete a part three protocol um, for a kidney cancer um, feasibility study. We um, had the public hearing um, and um, it went pretty well. And yesterday was the executive session where the members of the Health and Human Services Committee uh, voted on it. And um, after I'd worked with the vice chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, who was concerned about taxpayer money being spent to do this and the, and the cost, um, and I suggested too that the people here that are suffering these health impacts are also taxpayers. Um, so they're paying with their health, they're paying with their taxes. And um, we came to an agreement um, that was mutually agreeable with Department of Health and Human Services as to um, how this could be funded, that DHHS would have to seek outside grants, et cetera, um, and should those not be um, uh, able to, to be obtained by the division um, that um, we would go before the uh, Department of Health and Human Services Legislative Oversight Committee, and the money would be released pending. Uh, you know, we're we're trying, we just can't get the money. Anyway, the, yesterday was the vote, and um, the vote was 19 to 1. And I understand that one vote sort of is contrary on every bill. So um, I, think, I don't think it was reflective of the bill, So which was great. So we had full bipartisan support for it. So we're due to go um, to the uh, finance, I would imagine, and I believe Representative Mooney uh, may be on that. A committee. So I'm hopeful that it'll have good support. You know, I know it's, it's money that the state's spending, but the information that will be gleaned from this will be, you know, um, applicable to, to the entire state, you know, communities that, that have this kind of exposure. So that was a good thing. It was a good week. So, and I just wanted to thank all of the Merrimack residents and citizens who wrote in support, who, um, uh, you know, g gave the, the committee, a sense not only from here, but there was all over the state support. So, but thank you to the Merrimack um, residents who, who um, helped us out. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I am pleased to announce that our Merrimack Public Library will be featured in an upcoming segment of New Hampshire Chronicle highlighted how libraries have changed over the years. Reporter Jean Mackin and photographer Joe Wade visited the library on February 13th and were particularly interested in investigating our Library of Things collection. Those uh, include cake pans, musical instruments, night vision goggles, outdoor yard games, video game systems, video games, and much more. This collection has been purchased using library trustee funds, Friends of the Library's donations, as well as through partnerships with several Merrimack Girl Scouts completing their silver awards. 
they are honored, as well as the town is honored, to be included to promote our innovation library along Peterborough, Dover, and the Minot Sleeper Library in Bristol. It's very good. So stay tuned. Because an upcoming event, we don't have the date yet, sometime in March, but a vet will be highlighted on nice. TV. So we'll have to get her autograph next time we see her. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. All done, Paul? Yeah. Okay. There is no consent agenda. There's no old business. New business. Consideration of changes to Chapter 180, Temporary Sales, Locations, and Vendors of the Merrimack Town Code, First Reading, submitted by Town Manager Paul McKelly, the Town Council, to consider the acceptance of recommended changes to Chapter 180, Temporary Sales, Location, and Vendors of the Merrimack Town Code, pursuant to Charter Article Roman Numeral 5. Paul? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this has been in the works since the meeting that we had of May of 2022. Um, I have spent a lot of time researching our um, temporary sales location and vendor ordinance. I have talked to several of the gentlemen and ladies who come in and get a yearly um, license to operate in the town of Merrimack. And I have talked uh, read up from other communities what they do as well as talk to these other vendors because they just don't vend in Merrimack they vend in other communities as well and see what they like about those other communities what they dislike and things of that sort so the first change is underneath <clears throat> definitions uh, we added a definition of contact information because we asked for contact information and sometimes we get all this information sometimes we just get here here's here's my number so uh, contact information, the information such as your name, address, telephone number, and email address and tell, that tells someone how to communicate with you in case there's a problem after the event or if there's a cancellation before the event. So that's one of the first changes. Uh, the other change is looking at license requirements. Uh, there really, it says that before issuance of a license here on the applicant shall provide the town council a complete and criminal background investigation, motor vehicle record provided by the applicant um, in writing from the state of New Hampshire applicant state of residency. If you look at what I am trying 180-6H exemption, it says a completed background investigation dated within six months prior to the application in writing from the state of New Hampshire residence. Applications, applicants who engage in their peddler, vendor, hawker activities at an event with the approval from the event sponsor and, write, and when said event has obtained all other required approvals from the state and town are exempt from this criminal background check requirement. Basically, what we're saying is that if you're at an event and the event sponsor is taking responsibility for you, you don't need that requirement because it says right here, this is how to, basically this section is how to apply for a permit. So we just added that as, as a, a license requirement. If you're, you're exempt, you don't have to get that. Um, we crossed out, um, basically the license requirements will be for everybody except for a nonprofit or charitable organization. Any business now in this, that, that's doing business in the town will have to get one, a, a permit from us and pay the licensing fee. Um, that caused a lot of headache in my office by people saying, well, I have a, I operate a business and here's my permanent address and it's their home. And, or we get companies that come in and they do have brick and mortar and they say, here we are. So it was like, do we split hairs? How do we know? Just because they have a Hawker Pedalos license, and that's their permanent address on the Hawker Peddlers, they were saying, well, I'm exempt from paying a fee. So we said, enough's enough. If you're not a nonprofit or a charitable organization, you have to pay if you want a, a permit in this town of Merrimack. Um, in the next license requirement exemptions, we included the word yard sales because item three, when reading it to the average person, it means a yard sale. But we had some people say, well, I'm going to my neighbor's house and I'm selling my XYZ that I produce. 
No, it's if there's a yard that it was really meant for yard sales. It wasn't meant that you're just going over to your neighbor and they might be having a sale on something or, or you know, a, a yard sale and you're going to sell your, your stuff at that yard sale. It, it, it's more of a, this is just for yard sales. I know that's, it, but it's for yard sales. I think that's pretty clear now that that's what that's for. Um, and then we, we do not have a farmer's market anymore. If we do become and have a farmer's market, I'll bring that exemption back up. Um, then, uh, in the next one, application for li uh, Alliance, uh, 185 prerequis prerequisites B, we included door to door and route based hawkers and peddlers or vendors shall register with the Merrimack police department prior to commencing sales activity. And what we want to do there is we want to make sure that the police department and dispatch knows where they're selling. Because let me tell you, as people in neighborhoods see a car that they don't recognize or somebody walking around, they're calling dispatch up and saying, hey, uh, there's a strange man. And if we can say, yep, we know there's a XYZ in your area today. Thank you for the call. And it will help alleviate some of that. Right. We're sending out a patrolman to that area. And then we find out they pull out their license and say, but I'm approved, but I'm approved. So this way it's we're getting them and we're telling them up front they have to do that. Right. Um, Lon has a question. Yeah, the, if the question of the individual that shows up at your door saying you need new siding or window mm -hmm. is show me yes. your permit. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to have it on them. They're supposed to have it on them, on they're, their body. So, so anybody that comes to your door should have what you're talking about. Yes, right? they should. They should come through and and have it on them to get a permit from the office. And if they don't, they don't. Then then you know you could call the police and say that, or you know the, you you should be able to. You could call the police and say so and so from solar panels. And that is the other reason why we took out uh permanent you know permanent business because. T-Mobile says, oh, well, we have, a, we have an office in Merrimack, so we're, we don't need this peddler's license. Or uh, Solar City, oh, we have, a, we have a satellite office in Merrimack, so you know we have a satellite office, maybe not in Merrimack, but in Hudson, so we don't need your permit because we have a satellite office. That's why we took that requirement away and said everybody except for nonprofit and charity only. everybody has to have it so in your case they come to your door they're supposed to have a permit going forward once this is passed i've had that experience the fellow represented himself as an employee of a finance group that had an office in merrimack ah. but he had no other yep. identification or reason to presenting himself to me thank you yep you must have stayed at your end of the neighborhood. <laughs> you that corner. Nancy, you Nancy, did you have a question? You were probably in the same grandchildren. <laughs> probably. I did. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm just on just number three. I'm looking at the second part of that sentence, uh, the first sentence, and I'm just wondering. I understand what the what the thought is, but could that property of others with the property owner's permission could be construed to for to say if I'm a crafter. And I want to have a craft sale or a, in my driveway, but have a bunch of other p brand new items that I'm selling basically for profit in my driveway. Could that be used to get away with that exception? I mean, it's an it's, I know what it, oh, it yard means. Sales. You, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's in the yard sale, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it would be part of a yard sale, right? Yeah, I would think it would be a yard sale if you're doing it in your own yard, even if it is right. brand new stuff. Yeah, if it if it's in your yard, it's a yard sale. Case in point, you can't have a yard sale at the outlet mall. You can't have a yard sale at the vault unless you're a nonprofit for profit. If you have a yard sale at the vault, then you need a permit. But could a but could a vendor somebody that might go to the mall usually have people within different towns use their and use a location in Merrimack as a yard sale and send sell those items 
I mean, I think it's a it yard. Has to be a resident, right? It has, you have to, it's, it's like I said, it, it's, I understand it's a yard, but it's more of a resident. It's like, uh, it's like, for instance, your neighborhood. Yep. If you're having a yard sale and you want to bring in some crafters to sell on your property, you can do that because it's it's considered your private property. It's your yard sale. You cannot do that at a place of business such as Anheuser Busch or um, you know the outlet malls or or individual businesses, which is a little different than my personal Paul McCallie's address of one, two, three, four, anywhere in the United States, having a yard sale, bringing in some crafters. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You want second ballot once or just as Go ahead. Right yeah. um, uh, is it, have we done the section yet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, bring it up now before we go further, I suppose. Okay. So in Section 180-3, License Requirements, you know, we um, one of the things is the criteria is that you have to be able to produce a criminal background investigation. Um, if I'm a crafter and I'm knitting baby clothes and I want to sell them at a craft show, it's, it's you are getting, you have an agreed upon price, the person pays you the price, you hand over the article immediately. Unlike if you are getting estimates and setting up uh, services with a door-to-door -door salesperson who you're giving a down payment to and you have a promise of services at a later date. I can see those people needing a criminal background check, but not for the gal or the guy who's there knitting baby clothes to sell at a craft fair. And, and that it just is, seems a little extreme, especially since the service is being given to the person right away with the exchange of the money. And that is why we have the exception of 180.6H, which says that if the event organizers wants to take responsibility. But this may it. not be an organization type of situation. A lot of times event organizers, you, do you think that most of the craft, I mean, I've been to craft fairs that don't really have an event organizer. So it might just be the way the town is, and maybe they don't require event organizers to, they just say, come and get your spot and you're good. Maybe not in Merrimack. Um. So let's say that someone, let's do a hypothetical. Let's say they want to do a craft fair at the tractor supply mm -hmm. packing line. And a whole bunch of uh, people show up. People show up, okay, and you, and you, and you're given a booth. But and there you're would selling be selling booties. But there would be some kind of organizer who's doing that, whether it's an individual or okay, I'm just making sure. Or so a the organizer would be the one responsible for getting criminal checks. Well, okay. they they could waive that and take the responsibility that they're not bringing criminals into the town. And take that responsibility. So the organizer, the organizer, okay, because and they know the vendors that they're bringing in, into town. So are are we as a town? Are we accepting any liability by providing an exemption for the background check? So, you know, honestly, if, honestly, the reason why we're doing background checks is because we didn't want individuals that were. Little shady, doing business in Merrimack. Well, the, uh, at certain events, but if the event organizer is taking that responsibility on, then they are liable that if somebody something happens at an event that's so you're shady. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, usually they get insurance for things of that sort. But I guess my question is, I mean, is a town still liable just because we we let some event organizer that we don't know? provide us a, a statement that says, hey, this is not a shady character, and we let a shady character in town to do business. I could find that out for, I don't have that I, answer. I, I'm almost the opposite of, of Counselor Healy in that I'm not so sure that I like the exemption. So you, and, can and we I, transfer liability? It, yeah, well, if you think about the, the person that's doing the knitting of the baby clothes, mm -hmm. right? Is this going to be the only craft fair that they do in the state of New Hampshire? I mean, they're probably doing this 
quite often they probably got a state background check for some other town. We're not the only town that requires state background checks. Is that correct? No. Other town, other communities too. Do. Um, yeah, my guess is they probably already have a, a state background check. I, and it's real easy to get a background check, to be honest with you. Um, Sharon does it all the time uh, for the town. And Sharon, do you want to explain the process a little bit? Yeah, so uh, come up to a microphone, please. <laughs> yeah. She thought she could get away with sitting there. Uh, she's been there so long that I figured she finally wants to say something. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go up to Concord, it's a $25 fee. You fill out a form. If it's for you, you're filling it out. You're showing your ID. You're giving them $25. They give you your background check. If you mail it in, it takes a few weeks, but same process. Um, they can also have somebody get it for them. If they're unable to do it themselves, they get the form notarized who it goes to. They can go to Concord and get it right in hand. Their state of their residence, so if they live in a different state, it varies by state. So I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. So it's really sort of a minimal problem to get it. I think people would argue that it's a, that it's more than minimal. I mean, yes, you can mail it in and it takes two or three weeks and that makes it somewhat minimal if you have that kind of planning in advance. But driving up to Concord for a lot of people is a, a hardship. But that's Not that's the way rights. the risk, you know, the benefit ratio kind of thing. I mean, absolutely. I, you know, I don't want to make it any harder for having craft fairs in town. You know, I'm I'm not for that at all. But when you think about the purpose behind a background check and then, you know, to say that we're going to waive that based on somebody else saying, I'll take responsibility, but we don't know who that person is any more than we know who the person that isn't getting a background check is. Okay. I, I understand the question. I can ask it. Perhaps or we we'll ask it for our opinion. insurance company. Okay. This has been reviewed by legal counsel. Ah. Okay. But I'll have to ask that question about risk of liability to our insurance providers. And most of the craft fairs, forgive me, but uh, most of them are done by not-for-profit or, or charitable right. organizations. Right. School, like there are a couple. There are there are a couple that do it for profit, mm -hmm. and they charge significant amount of money to be in their booth. They're not. They're not popping up at Tractor Supply saying, let's have a craft fair today. Right. Um, they're, they're planning and organizing it and, and charging a significant amount of money. And yes, you do get some of those people who knit booties and, and sweaters and, 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 you know, at those. But, you know. Most of the ones I've seen this time are associated with, like, schools. Schools mm -hmm. or School. church. Or church. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I... Or senior yes. citizens. Or senior Bingo. citizens, right, which are not all, would know anything about which all are underneath the charity slash not-for-profit organization. Which uh, falls under. Falls the... under, you don't have to get a permit to be there. Right. It's the ones for profit, the ones that are at the outlet mall, the ones that are at Anheuser-Busch, which they don't really do one there. The one that is at Tractor Supply, things of that sort. That Those settles are the ones it for me. At. The for-profit makes a difference. I yeah. think it's better to say it that way. To write in for profit? Maybe. Or maybe just on the other in section H. Where, you know, maybe you can validate or at least explain Would it that a little better. Would that help you feel better, Andy? If it was written for profit? I mean, for me, I, I would just like a legal read to say whether we're we're accepting liability gotcha. by giving this waiver or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So one more thing, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, also, in the way the line reads, the applicant shall provide, still in that section A of 180-3, shall provide to the town council a completed criminal background investigation, da 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 da, da. Shouldn't that be a town manager or his designee? because that's the way we do everything else. No one comes directly to the town council. And we're not issuing the permit. Well, technically you are. You gave me permission to issue the permit. So shouldn't that say that? It, the permit's coming. They're, they're applying for the permit to the town council. I am just 
the designee to sign off because when this first came into effect, the town council had to sign off on every one of them and finally said, enough. We'll give this it to is the town a part manager. of the code, right? Yes. It's part of the town code. So. Well, we're changing the code. Yeah, but that's, that's why it has to be town council because we're setting a code. Okay. Just double checking. No, but I understand your point. Yes. Yes. I'm the designee that it's later on that gives me permission in here that I can do all that stuff. I'm one of the other last numbers. I don't know exactly. Did we do 180-5 Part C yet? Uh, we can Part go there C. right now, yes. Okay. Yes. Because in C, it, where it says, the applicant shall provide a copy of their approved itinerant vendor to the Merrimack Police Department. Is that the state or Merrimack's? That's Merrimack's. Can we say that? Uh, they're approved Merrimack, yes. Because remember, you, there's a state one too, so. Yeah, I we, didn't know which one we were talking about. We, we can throw the name Merrimack yeah. in front of itinerant vendor. Yeah. All right. We yeah. good with the first two pages? Yeah. All right. Moving on to page three. Um, basically, we just, that, that was that definition we put in there. Um, number one on 180-6A. It just was very wordy, so we just said contact information for both the owner and the permit applicant. If sometimes they're different, um, and uh, in writing is the event sponsor. We wanted in writing that they're taking over the legal liability, but we will get you, Councilor Hunter, your legal opinion on H to see if that's okay. And those are the only changes I had on three. The license required shall be issued by the town council or their designee, which is that's giving me the permission to yeah. sign it at that point, issuing it. Okay. I don't have a problem if you want me to put it up on the sure. uh, yeah. the other one too, town council or designee. Yep. All right. So that's page three. Page four. Um, we have a rolling year and that's become very cumbersome for us with, with the licensing because some people might get the licensing in july and then all of a sudden there's an event in june and, and they're okay with it and then other people well why where are they how come they had to get their license they i didn't have to you know they didn't get to get the license we did so what we said is look we discussed this in my our office and we had a big debate about this is that when do we want to start the year and it's going to be consistent for everybody so we're going to have a start and end date and we said well april 1st is a good time because people are gearing up for events in may and june and july and they know where they'll be for the summer and it dies down in new hampshire in the months of january and february and march a little bit but the to do it from april to march is a good time because they'll get them in in march when it's a slow period and we can get them processed for the yearly vendors. Um, so we changed that from a rolling to a specific date. I uh, talked to several of the vendors about that. They like that a lot better. Um, they, they feel that, that they, if they know they need the stuff, they'll get us the stuff. And, and honestly, we looked at our vendors and we have one that begins in November. We have six or seven that begin in June for a year, and that's it. And the only reason why the six or seven in June is because that's when Anheuser-Busch starts all their events, June and July. So it's just cheaper them, for them to buy a yearly at that time. This way, if they want to come in in June, it's still $250. But know that you're good until the following March. Yeah, not to the following June. Not to the following June. Okay. You're good to the so following March. So whatever they start. There will be an end date on the permit. Like Right. Okay. So you have like November. Right. It'll be good until the following March 31st. Right. Well, yes. Yeah, and the then they'll reapply April yeah, 1st. The gen and I talked to that gentleman the other day in my office, and uh, he understood what we were doing. And he's, that'd be great. As That'd be great. You know it, and then as long it. as I know it, and I said I know you're you're paid up through June of twenty twenty three. 
when you come in for June, I mean, not June, November of 2023, when you come in, we're going to give you till the following, we're not going to cut it off on March 2024. We'll give you the extension through the following March of 2024. We're grandfathering those couple of months because of the change. And instead of prorating from November to March and then saying, here you go, we just, we figure there's only one of them. So it makes it a lot easier. If I had, t- if I had several, uh, you know, 15, 20 of them, I'd be like, nope, we're going to prorate and this is the deal. But with one, it's there. The next big change in this whole ordinance is multiple locations. Yeah. Um, we have vendors who come to multiple locations and do multiple events. And every, I hear it all the time. I just gave you two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. Now I got to come in and get another one. Here's another two hundred and fifty. All right. Now I'm doing a third one. Here's an, so you're getting seven hundred and fifty dollars for me out of me for these three events. Can't I just get a multiple location permit? And this way I can sell at all these. Cause I'm calling up health inspector and saying, hey, I got to get my vehicle inspected again. It's like you were just here last week. Yeah, the vehicle hasn't changed, but I got a new location. I got Abel Ebenezer. I got the outlet mall. And every time they're supposed to get in, in. So what I decided and talked to the staff and presenting it to the council for their approval is we do a tiered multiple location. However, it isn't a, hey, let me give me my year starting in April. And then in July, I come back and say, oh, by the way, I want my second location for XYZ Pottery Barn. No, they have to have all their locations listed out at the initial time of application. Meaning that if I know that I go to Anheuser-Busch, if I know that I go to, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm using Anheuser-Busch, but they have a lot of events in town. They, they do this. The Outlaw Mall is another area where they have some events. Um, and then Abel Ebenezer is another one. And then we have uh, um, some miscellaneous throughout town. But if they know they're going to these areas on a yearly basis and they're going to go there, they just come in when they put in their application in March and say, I want to be at XYZ location. There's two fifty for the first location, a hundred dollars for the second location, and then twenty five dollars after that for each other location. The reason being is, and that's good for the year. Good for the year. We don't the the information they're giving us. They're giving us the background check. They're getting their vehicles inspected, and this this will you know. It will help, and really, it, it will help, help everybody. It helps everybody. Yeah. I've talked to three vendors. Of course, they're loving it because now they're not paying seven fifty; they're paying four hundred, say, for four locations, which is helping them out. Because a food truck isn't making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they're selling if they're selling a thousand dollars of interest, and I'm not into like making you. them profitable. But if they're selling a thousand dollars, if they're giving the town of Merrimack ten cents for every sale then the people who are going up to the food truck are the ones that are buying it. And those are our residents that are going up to these food trucks and buying the food. So hopefully the, they don't raise their price kind of with that. But that was that was one of the biggest complaints that I received in my office. Multiple location, multiple location, multiple location. I think I kind of worked it out here. And then they have to, re, they have to call the police 24 hours in advance and tell them they're going to be at that other location. Okay. Now, if there's a so big, they've big, already been approved. They've already been approved. It's just a notification. A notification, and that's so that if there's another vendor who comes in, and they're sitting there, and they they have the one, you know, I I paid for my permit, Nancy didn't, or vice versa. Nancy paid for a permit, and then all of a sudden I show up. Well, why are they there? No, they already paid for their permit, and it when it will settle some of those discussions and if the police come out there they know that paul mccallie's supposed to be there at xyz locations and they'll can come and discuss it that way instead of saying hey you know you guys are in a fight let me you know, handle it that way so andy uh, two questions what's the difference between the second location and the third location try honestly just put numbers down and and to look at this there's still some you know most vendors have two locations and just try to to put a number down to a piece of paper honestly there was no rhyme or reason why i went with 100 or or, um 25 
However, when I did look at other towns, they had that kind of tier. Their first location was high. Second location was kind of middle. Third location was down on the low end. And then second question, what are we trying to control by having having them do all of this at the time of the initial application instead of coming in later and adding a second, third, fourth location? My, my staff time. Okay. Because now I got to pull it. I got to look at it. If it's after six months, technically on this policy, they're supposed to give me a new a new uh, background check. Yeah, and a new inspection. A new after, inspection. After six months, correct. Yeah, after six months. And a new ins then we're going to have to reinspect and all that other stuff. So it's we can bring the class down. Yeah. Okay. That's really why we're doing it that way. Because with this, if they don't come in at time, then we'd have to reinspect. And most of these people that are that that would be interested in this, I have probably three vendors that would be interested in this. They know where they're going to be. Yeah. They know that they're going to sell at at least three locations. Yeah, I just I I guess you know if we're going to do this. For me, I, I struggle with this, that we're going to require them to do it at the time of the initial, but yet we're going to charge them more for the second and than we are the third. Or we we say you can do it any other time, but the second costs more, you know, and it gets cheaper as you go. And, you know, there's a six month period where you can add locations, but the, excuse me, they are more expensive. You know, they're not $25, but... Uh, I guess I just struggle. Why are we charging them a hundred dollars for the second one, and only twenty? Yeah, hundred dollars for the second one, twenty five dollars for the third one. If they're standing at the counter doing them all at one time, anyways. And and I brought those numbers up to one of our vendors who I know would be jumping on this. He didn't bat an eye. He said, "That's awesome. Do you want me to go to council and tell them that's awesome? I'll go to the council and tell them that's awesome." So prior to so, this time, there what what was the cost? What was the alternative? The alternative was, was $250 for a year, and then, and then another $250 for another location if they wanted to do a year. And if there was a third one? Another $250, or if they were only going to sell for one day, it was $50. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> one. You know, I think Councilor Hunter's concern begs the question of how how many of these multiple site vendors does the town expect to deal with over a year? Three. Thank you. And right now they're paying 550 to 750. Okay, I'm good. Do you want to suggest something different, Andy? Well, I'm not. I mean, if I was to write the policy, it doesn't make sense to me the, the way it's written. I, I I don't know how we justify saying we're going to charge them $100 for the second one, then there's no more work for the second one than there is the third one. You know, we're trying to cover the expense to the town. Is it? I, I guess that's a question. Is this a revenue stream or are we trying to cover the expenses to the town? A little bit of both. Uh, and that's really what it boils down to. If we want it to be a revenue stream, then, I you know, I have I have no issue with the, the fee structure as it is. If we're just trying to, you know, control this and at the same time cover the town's expense to control and monitor this, then, you know, it should be $25 for the second one. I just it, don't... Did, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I'm not I'm not stuck one way or the other. I, I could approve it as is. Honestly, I think it's also so that somebody just doesn't come in and just start throwing down a bunch of locations. The hundred dollars for the second location is okay. I really got to think: Am I going to sell there, or am I just gonna, you know, say, "Hey, I'm going to be here," or "Hey, I'm going to be there," and that's why. And most towns, like I said, most towns do have a scale down on on theirs. I just put numbers down on a piece of paper, you know, between 250, 100, and then 25. Tom? Well, do we offer any exclusivity on locations when they make these applications for a license? Nope. There's only one location in town that has an is exclusive, and that's because of 
the um, site plan. Because of the what? Site plan. Oh. Of where the loca where they're selling. Right. So. Okay. If there is, we give them a license. One guy calls the police department, says, "I'm going to be there." Does that give them now exclusivity for the next day, or if the other guy shows up? No, no, does not. Just tells them that they're there, and as long as the other, the next guy who shows up there at those look that location has a permit to be at that location, and has also told the police department he was going to be going to be there. Yeah. Then, then the two of them get to the same location. There's only room for one, and they fight so, it out so when you so when, but you when, we're, when we're doing the really what this is for is the bigger events and okay. you know if they're selling on if they're selling on town property we're going to know about it you know we're going to because we have to approve anything on town property um so it's really for the the bigger events that they're selling you know for several days and they can't just they can't just show up for instance if xyz company is holding an event they can't just say okay uh, i i'm coming today because i got this permit it's got to be you know uh, case in point able ebenezer's there's not enough room for more than one food truck vendor so able ebenezer has to say no this is i said that Joe Smith could come come, and, not come and sell that day. Selling. Just because you have this permit from the town doesn't give them exclusive rights to sell. They still need permission from At the, the owner Pleasure. of the business to sell that day. At the site. I guess I'm envisioning two hot dog vendors showing up at a soccer field or something like that. And we at at something like on the soccer field, since we own that property, we control that. Oh yeah. Good. We we, we can control that. That you know, they they have it, you know. Put them in different fields. That's the thing. There's tons of soccer fields in town. Okay, so okay. what does what does the group think about this? As is, changes, whatever. What are your thoughts? I think it's great. I move it to the uh, public hearing. Because there's nothing else aside from that. Okay. I make a motion that we move it to the public hearing. Motion made by Tom Koenig. Second. Seconded by Nancy Murphy. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any recused? Okay, six zero zero. And, and I am moving it forward with the changes that were right. suggested. Okay. I just want to. Clarify that. Adding of the town yeah. council, okay. town manager. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify. Don't want to assume. Thank you. Okay. Next, number two, yep. town of Merrimack naming policy review and discussion. Submitted by town manager Paul McCauley, the town council to review and discuss the town of Merrimack's naming policy. Um, this has come up. Back in October of 2020 was the last time that we had somebody come in front of the council to donate uh, an item, a bench. And at that time, the town council asked then town manager to write or amend the current policy that we have in place. Um, basically, what I did here is uh, add the section for benches because we have a spec for a bench when somebody wants to donate a bench but yet that wasn't clear and each individual park location has an area where we would like to have these benches for instance abby griffin park we kind of want them on the outskirts we don't want a bench put right in front of the bandstand we kind of want them on the outskirts at watson park we kind of want them on them that I'll call it a meandering sidewalk where the trees are where the trees are we kind of want them up in that section of, of the park because of our limitations of digging and, and things of that sort within the park and we don't want a kid running after a frisbee because we put a bench in the middle of the park right. and then all of a sudden it becomes us our fault that they got hurt because we shouldn't have ever put it there so what i tried to do is is i tried to incorporate that i tried to incorporate what our if you're going to do a bench what it needs to be 
Um, and this is not a spec that I wrote. This was a spec that we took from Abby Griffin. So this has already been in the town. It's just never been in this policy. Um, and then the other thing I did, um, the trees. People, oh, I want to donate a tree and plant a tree. Well, that's great. However, that means that if they donate the tree, my DPW or my building and grounds now have to go make sure that tree gets watered or the gator on the bottom is filled. What I said is that it needs to be a low maintenance tree and a tree that is con conducive to that soil and things of that sort. You don't want to put um, a, uh, a palmetto tree in the middle of Watson Park. It's not going to grow because of our climate, but an oak tree might or a uh, a maple tree or yeah. or a magnolia might you Flowering. know yeah. you know things of that sort so you want them kind of native to the area um and then uh really the 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 it's just really a lot of uh renumbering and and just adding the words benches and trees and and things of that sort so that that's just bringing it forward Uh, Tom, and then Lon. Go. Paul, in section D on the second page, yep. it talks about um, must be at least six inches in diameter. Yeah. <laughs> My question. That's a huge tree. That was just. That's diameter, not circumference. Yeah. Half a foot across. That that yes, it is a bigger That's tree. Bigger than most people can move around. I mean, yeah. Um, Where did that come from? Um, it was just something that I took off of another website. If we wanted to do a three inch or a four, um, it was more for getting the talking people not going. to do so. <laughs> well, not not that, but just you know, jumping off. I, I don't want to see, we don't want saplings. We don't want people, place. and nothing's wrong with planting saplings, yeah. but we don't want a sapling to come into town because look what happens. So look, Frazier. It does sound funny. Yes. No saplings allowed. I know. It's, I'm going to be, yeah, okay. <laughs> Frazier Square, case in point. The Christmas tree that's at Frazier Square right now, after I did all that research, was a dedication of the tree that was three foot high at the time when they planted it yeah. and probably you can't yeah. find the sign anymore because it's underneath it's the tree. underneath the tree because it has grown over over the years i'm, I'm trying to get trees because of the low maintenance yeah. and stuff that's gonna survive no i the understand worst, that part the it's worst just thing, a six inch yeah. diameter yeah. That it, it was a jumping it's a jumping off point into the pond Probably three inches will be be suffice. I just don't want a tree diameter? that is I, not. I would say something like three. Yeah, maybe. Is not three inch diameter. Yes, Barbara. two to three inch. Oh wait, actually, one first, then Barbara. Go ahead, Lon. Yeah, continuing with the six inch tree, <laughs> um, I understand exactly what your concerns are. But even a three inch tree, when you think about the um, root ball, um, are we going to be is DPW or the gardener, or whatever part of that is, going to be the ones planting the tree? Or are we going to be giving permission to people for they're going to have to use more than a uh, more than my garden spade that I use to plant my tomatoes every spring? Um, planting several trees over my career before I became an accountant um, in my prior life. Uh, yeah, you're not going to use your garden spade, but you're going to have to use a shovel. And if somebody wants to donate a tree, I would assume that they're donating it in the ground. Now, if it's a ceremonial tree that we're choosing to plant, that's a different story. But, and honestly, I have not seen anybody requesting a tree to be planted as a memorial to somebody in a long time. But they could. They could. The last the last one was Fraser Square and they were the crimson maples that went in at Fraser well, Square. What about here in the town? Wait in the those are dedicated trees. 
in between the park and what's not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I know were. that I know there's one in the front. They were put there as a memorial. Uh, Talk to Phil Machino. Okay, um, but I know there's one in the front. When the front of the when building. they were talking about the um, courthouse, mm. it came up. No, this was building. Right. This was put in memory of, and that was put in memory of. Yeah, and it's been a while yeah. since those kind of. I don't think there are plaques, but yeah, I I will talk to him about those. But yeah, they. If they're coming in, of course, we're going to have say with where they go as well. Right. So uh, I'm okay with a two to three inch tree. I want something I that's a little, two to three. Yeah. a little hardy or than, well, than a. Yeah, I mean, the, the ones you buy are responsible the one, for their tree surviving. But right. You go to tractor supply, you get one of those the fruit trees. Yeah. It's a half inch in diameter. Half yeah. inch in diameter, and they want to donate that. You need to walk time. over because you don't see it. Barbara, you had a question? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Trees, benches, monuments, historical signs. Where are you? Um, first page. Whereas, or oh. um, it doesn't include historical signs, and we do have some along different ways here in town. So I, I think we need to add that as well. And also down in uh, section one, part B, uh, whether, you know, anytime that there's a person is giving historical information, I think we need to use our historical commission to validate that the information is right or even add to it. That's what we got them for. We're you're talking about the list of criteria under yeah, B? Yeah, that and I mean, that's, B and C, actually. That's to be evaluated by the by the town council. It's not necessarily has to be proven when they deliver it, I guess. Well, it, we need I someone mean, to validate it. Well, the Park. town council can give it to the Parks and Rec Committee. They can give it yeah, to the, the Heritage, Heritage Commission. Right. Which, historical but, society. So what you're suggesting will be part of the town council's deliberation is to have to the include the historical they, commission. Right. Not the society. Okay, but you know what I mean. But it doesn't. But that's what the responsibility of the town council. Right. Would be. Because I think in here it did mention something about giving it to Parks and Rec or whatever. Well, they won't know. They they're not the historians of the town. So it's two e one. It would be the town council may authorize the Parks and Rec committee to take public input to make the recommendation or utilize town. Commissions, boards, commissions, whatever, yeah. and, yeah. and to be able to utilize. And yeah, it's gonna do. To be. No. Can we go back to where you're thinking of implanting the words historical plaques? Uh, in the listing, right? It's the second in, whereas. In the listing, yeah. It's uh, whereas the second paragraph, council may on occasion, have occasion to place trees, benches, slash monuments at. So it should maybe be place trees, benches, slash monuments, slash historical signs. Thank you. And it repeats in section 1A as well. Good. And on the form. Do Tom? No? Lon, did you have a question? Yeah, on the second page, uh, number 10 on, uh, up there at the top, 789, all benches must be pinned to the ground. Um, what do we mean by a pin? Is that going? Is that going to preclude benches from Wasserman Park? I mean, uh, Watson Park? No, it's 
sorry. Um, no, because what you do with a pin is you drive it in with a hammer. You're not digging up the ground to put the pin in. And then the granite poles are cored and they go on top of the pin to secure them from being toppled. Okay, thank you. Okay, Paul, you want to finish? Or, or I'm um, finish? basically, you know, that that's that that was it in a nutshell of what we were looking to do. Um, mm -hmm. because we have had an uptick in a, in a, the last couple of weeks, people have called about benches. So that led me to go back and say, can I look at Finish the last set of minutes? And that's when I found that the council asked for that to come back. Tom? One, one more minor technicality. In, in uh, E3 at the, at the end, you said placement and or renaming and left the E on the end where the ING replaced it. Just need to remove that E. Right, yeah, the E comes off because naming, you drop the E with the ING, yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't lined out or anything. So. Anyway. It's naming. Thank you. It's naming. It would be naming. Placement and or naming. Andy? Just clarification and maybe education on my part. Does these the spec for these benches? I know this policy is is for uh, parks and public facilities, but the specs to these benches does that apply to uh, conservation property as well? These are memorial benches. These are memorial benches when, uh, like, in loving memory of Jackie Flood. But if if somebody wants to place a memorial bench on conservation land. Conservation. Probably, do do sure. we need to follow these specifications for a bench, or if someone wants to donate a wood bench, that, that, is that okay that, for conservation? For conservation, yeah, the conservation okay. would accept that. Perfect. This is for granite benches, and that's what we really. Need. But you could have wooden benches anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that this is? It's really. Good. It does bring up a good question. Good question. I mean this. The way it's written, I understand it as anywhere in town, this is the criteria versus this is suggested if it's a granite bench. What? Do you know what I'm saying? I agree. So it's maybe just... you need to say C is a granite bench is donated to the town. Must meet these criteria. Because if they grant, they have, I would say it has, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think the intent of this or to this bench specification is to cover no I, i'm not covering i'm not covering a wooden bench that or one of these newfangled the uh, then there should be an exception uh, statement you know uh, well I, poly west poly, yeah, poly benches or something i mean this this policy is specific to parks and public facilities so i i think we're good i just want to make sure if the conservation commission's doing something different they're okay to do something different i think they are because this policy doesn't doesn't necessarily apply isn't to conservation public, land. Isn't it a public facility? It is. It's public. I'm just saying it could be pushed. I, I'm okay. I just want to make sure whatever the conservation commission is doing is within the will of the council. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I got yeah. you. I think you just need to change it to granite benches because if, if they want to put something out in twin bridges alongside of the water or something, yeah, it probably that's... doesn't need to be a granite bench. No, I I just change it to granite benches. Thank you. The other thing is is though that'll take care. Andy, uh, uh, Councilor Hunter just opened up the can of worms. <laughs> no offense. Um, that uh, <laughs> do we need to add something about regular benches that they are placed. In may choose a bench shall be placed in available areas depicted by applicable park map. Because if somebody wants to not put a granite bench but just a XYZ right bench, bench right out in the middle, right in the middle of Watson Park, well, you know that's but anything they do has to get approved, right? Correct. But but you know the same thing could be of the conservation commission is is that somebody goes out there and says I'm donating this bench. And I want it here. And no, 
the site has to be approved. The site has the, to be approved. And, and that's what I'm kind of getting at. Do we need to say that here is that for all benches, the donor may choose where the bench shall be placed from an available. She may be request. Yeah, request. request. Yeah. request yeah. Where but would have to be approved by the town council. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or. Because that or, would be part of the presented. Designate. We'd look at it. Yeah. Or their designate. Could be the Well, they designate. Yes. Donors may request. Where so I think you're right. You don't want it in the middle of the field. <laughs> right. You know, but I think I, I like think, the Queenbridge, you wouldn't I, want a granite down there. You'd want a wooden wooden one or a polygon or something. Right. I think number question? eight, nine, and ten really are for all benches. Because the last thing I would want to do is have a bench put in a conservation commission and then somebody comes in there and picks it up and throws it or breaks it or, or things of that sort. So I think numbers eight, nine, and ten really do apply for all benches. One through seven apply for granite benches. Yeah. And what I can do with there is I can add a statement, all benches, benches, whether there you go. whether granite or wooden slash plastic, da 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 da. I mean, they'd all have to be pinned to the ground somehow. Yeah. But couldn't do you have engraving? Do you want to a... take another crack at this, Paul, and bring it back again? Or I got some good input here. I, I understand. No, and it was before us voting on is what you're saying. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, I do have some good input here, and I think the council understands where we're going with the granite portions of it. But there were definitely some questions about some of the other items which were brought up. They were very good questions. Lon, did you have a question as well? You're all set. Okay. No. <laughs> and yes, I can, Nancy. I, I was just gonna say. Um, the engraving, I know you, we were just talking about that in terms of a granite, but couldn't you have engraving on a, a you know, a, some kind of specially treated wood with a plaque on it? Couldn't there be engraving? So should that be part of, uh, could be any engraving on a bench? I mean, I don't know what they could be made yeah. out of, but the potential exists for something else to be engraved. Uh, what we can say, or a plaque approved by the town council yeah, designee on benches. But if you got, that, that's they for must granite. propose. But it, you know, if it's a you know a X Y Z plastic bench, yeah. you know somebody wants to attach in loving memory of ex mom. Right. So the so the re, the request must include a proposal of the yeah. chain group. Or, yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, I got enough information. If you just want to uh, table this yeah. until uh, Sound good. March 9th. Move the table from March 9th. Second. Motion made by Tom Koenig, second by Barbara Healy, to table until March, what was it? 9th. 9th. There you go. Sounds good. Okay, number three. Vote. What? Vote. Oh, we have to vote on the table. You're getting sarcastic. Thank you. <laughs> Those in favor of the tabling? Uh, He's vote. Aye. <laughs> and it's not even close to 10 yet. And I have all this to read yet. Okay, so that's 600. Yes, Mr. Woods. I know that I know the motion has passed. I just want to know if the manager will have time to bring in sample benches. Very funny, isn't he, huh? Sure. He's trying to get those shots in while he can. Okay. You go on a field trip and look at there you go. Review of the 23-24 default budget. The town council will review the 23-24 default budget by town manager. I'm pretty much all talked out, so I'm going yeah, well, to I'm gonna pass this over to Tom to do. It's been a lot of talking tonight. I get you. <laughs> Oh, you've designated Tom to do it? Is that what you? That's what he said. Ah, I missed that. I should designate someone to read the warrant. Okay. Um, first off, I want to 
apologize for having to speak to you through this mask this evening. I'm going to do my best to be clear. Um, but I did have a household member test positive for COVID last week. So I'm following the rules that say I need to mask up for 10 days. I'm on day eight. I have no symptoms and I tested negative yesterday. But uh, since our HR director just recently left the room and may still be watching on TV, I'm going to keep this <laughs> mask on so i don't get myself in you notice she's, he's concerned not with the town manager <laughs> but the hr um so the default budget i just wanted to review very quickly for the benefit of the the people at home uh, what the what the default budget is um the default budget is basically the mechanism that the legislators came up with so that municipalities could continue to operate in the event that uh, that the voters vote no on the proposed operating budget. Um, so this is the budget that, that goes into effect in the event that the voters do not vote to approve the proposed operating budget. Um, so this is defined by statute and the way that you calculate the default budget is by taking the amount of the same appropriations as contained in the operating budget authorized for the previous year, reduced and increased as the case may be by debt service, contracts, and other obligations previously incurred or mandated by law and reduced by one-time expenditures contained in the operating budget. One-time expenditures are appropriations that are not likely to reoccur can you hold on a second, Tom? Leading budget. Do yes. you have a question, Tom? I didn't mean necessarily to interrupt, but that, but in the first line here, you say that the the twenty three twenty four budget as an operating budget is thirty six million, and we just moved thirty eight million. Why is there a difference between the number we moved to the town warrant and the number you have listed there? That number is from the twenty two twenty three budget that was that was approved last last april that's from last year 24 default budget is from when from the 22 23 you, budget to get to the the default budget number you start with the number on last year's warrant that was approved the operating budget okay. number that was approved all right thank you that's why there's a difference so basically the default budget freezes the budget at the previous year's level except for amounts which except the town that. is right. legally obligated to pay or which were one-time expenditures. So to kind of go through the mechanics of uh, how you arrive at the numbers, what you, where you start uh, with is, is the number from the prior year's warrant. That would be Article 4 of last year's warrant, which was the operating budget article uh, of 36218840 uh to that number you make adjustments um for things like collective bargaining agreements now you'll note that um there was a a separate warrant article last year uh, on a collective bargaining agreement with the teamsters union um, so that was not part uh, and that was approved by the voters but that was not part of the operating budget number that was in article four so the current the uh 23-24 um, impact of that collective bargaining agreement needs to be added in to that number to get you kind of to an adjusted starting point of 36268599 So if I can interrupt again, yeah. the NEB, NEPBA 112 and 12 union contracts also had numbers in them for this year 22 23 shouldn't that they were rolled into the article article 4 last year of the 36 million 218 because they were passed so we did not the only the only addition basically the default budget is you take your operating budget and you add all your additional items so in our case last year we had the operating budget of that and we added the one teamster contract because if we we could add to make it really complicated. We can add Article Five and Six, which were the 
capital reserve funds. Yeah. And then we'd have to take them out on the right hand side. So we don't do that to because it would be real confusing. So basically the default budget is you take your operating budget, Warren article, that number, add any additions. If there was a contract, say we had a four year contract for sprinkler system in town hall, that would be added to that number in the year that it, it was approved. The subsequent years, once you get an approved budget, it's in that war operating budget number. And I, I'm seeing my error now. The number under the second column for those two articles is the amount that was approved for that 23-24 year, and therefore it hadn't been added in yet. And so it's Correct. been added in that other column. To, to add in, to come up with a starting point. My yep. bad. No problem. Yep. Um, so there are some adjustments, uh, as, as we were just discussing, uh, for union contracts that are, that are in effect but were approved in, in previous years um, uh, earlier than last year, uh, the NEPBA 112 and, and, uh, and 12 so contracts, and the, uh, the impact of those as set forth in the warrant for the 23-24 year are those amounts stated there 18,000 for uh any PBA 12 112 and 133,000 for um the, the police union any PBA 12 and I see a couple of confused faces the reason why those numbers for 18 and 133 that's additional cost from the 2223 so those were additional costs when we write when we talked about the IAFF that I showed you the three years, that would be, those are the additional costs for those years from the prior year, pursuing yeah. years. So that's why they're there on this, like, like that. And then we've got the 23-24 effect of the Teamsters uh, agreement from last year's warrant of 35,000. Um, in addition, because uh, the union contracts are, are legally binding and under those contracts, contracts were re required to provide health insurance, um, were required to contribute to uh, the New Hampshire retirement system for those union employees, were retired to have workers' comp insurance for those uh, union employees, we, we are able to make adjustments. Uh, some of them are positive, some of them are negative, uh, depending on what's going on with, the, with those rates in those contracts. Um, but for our, our uh, union employees only. So the 190,000 of additional health insurance is uh, the, the increase in the health insurance related to uh, union employees. Um, Similarly, the uh, NHRS uh, decrease uh, is, is related to the union employees. That's basically offsets the health insurance increase of 190,000. Um, and then workers' comp rates uh, have declined across the board. Um, so we've got to reflect the impact of those uh, in the current year for the union employees. So some of the warrants that we're moving today are like the IAFF contract, the one for AFSCME, and the changes in the budget resulting from those contracts. But yet we move them to the warrant. What if they get voted down? We still are legally binding for those, aren't we? Not the union contract. Their salaries freeze okay. to the Article 4 of $36 million to They're included in that $36 million. So whatever was approved last whatever year. Whatever was approved last okay. year, it stays that way. But begs the question, what happens if they get approved? They are added. If, so we're, in default, added. if yeah. we're in a default situation, we'll be separate. They're, they're, they're separate okay. added to because the Because it's not part of the default. Okay, yeah. I understand. Thank you. Um, in addition, if, if you plan to eliminate any positions in the current year budget, you do need to reflect those in the default budget as well. So they, they kind of catch you, catch you coming or going. They're, yep, they, they get you either way. So in the current year's uh, operating, in the current year's proposed operating budget, 
Uh, we had eliminated a position in the police department for a detective secretary, um, and we had uh, eliminated the funding for uh, one of the full-time positions in the town clerk tax collector's uh, department. And, uh, and those impacts, uh, which are, are salaries and benefits, are, are 71000 for the uh, police detective uh, secretary and 64000 for the uh, account clerk in the, in the tax collector's office. Um, in addition, as, as per the statute, uh, you need to eliminate one-time capital expenses that were in the prior year's operating budget. So that starting point of the, the $36 million included uh, some uh, one-time capital improvements. Um, specifically, they were the uh, 800 megahertz system is the, is the biggest one. Um, the uh, cabin roof repairs or replacements at uh, Wasserman Park is in there. There was a base radio unit for, uh, uh, for the dispatch department. Um, and there was uh, the, file, uh, the, the file cabinet for the community development department are the, uh, the four items that, were, uh, that are being deducted here because they are not not recurring items, um, uh, so we have to take them out. And then there's an adjustment for debt service. Basically, you gotta uh, put in your current year debt service and take out the prior year. In our case, that results in a, in a further decline in the default budget because our debt service is, is going down this year because we have uh, one less bond outstanding. Um, so the impact of all of that gives you a, a default uh, budget appropriation number of $35,300,821. Uh, um, and carrying that forward, uh, if you then take your uh, adjusted revenue numbers, which are basically the revenue numbers from our proposed 23-24 uh, operating budget less the use of fund balance because um, that kind of gets taken off the table if you're in a, a default budget situation. Um, so you take those adjusted uh, revenues out of the uh, or, or subtract those from the default appropriations, um, include your tax overlay and your veterans exemptions, get you down to your uh, property tax levy divided by the current year valuation uh, leaves you with a default property tax rate of $3.42, uh, which compares to the proposed tax rate for just the operating budget um, in, the, in the proposed budget of $3.64. So you're talking about a difference of uh, 22 cents on the tax rate. So that is... Um, Kind of a quick recap, you can see the uh, comparison down at the bottom there of the proposed operating budget appropriations, and that's the $38 million that you guys moved to the warrant, um, versus the uh, default budget calculation of $35 million, a uh, difference of, uh, of $3.5 million. So if there are any further questions. Uh, and it's up to us all of us to educate the public that in the difference of $3.4 million, $1.4 million is the gas station. $800,000 was additional paving. So just in two items, that's 2.2 .2 of the 3.4. And I have a whole list of other items, um, union, uh, in there, you know, there, there's a bunch of other things, non-union raises that we talked about of 186,000. So it's up to us to educate people why there's such a large number like we had to do in years past. But that is, that's the reason why. It's, it's not that we're over-appropriating. It's the way default is set up is some of these items that you do, some of the bigger items you do really jack your, your, um, your tax rate you know, your appropriation up, not your tax rate up, but your appropriation up that are offset by revenue. The 1.4 is offset by fund balance. 
The $800,000 for paving is offset by a safer grant, basically. But that's the education stuff that we need that we need to work on and 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 move forward. And we will explain that in the voters' guide as well. We pray that we get through another year, honestly. And if not, then we're going to have to go to what they call a rack rate and what you see out here at the gas stations when they up and up their uh, their price per gallon and decrease their price per gallon. That's based on projection of a rack rate. So we'd be on a rack rate if our, our system failed. We couldn't use our gas pumps that we have in there, either that or, or we'd have to go and go to the state refueling center here, which is over by Elbit Systems, which is out of, it's in town, but it's out of our way. There aren't many vehicles that drive that way. Um, you know, maybe a fire truck if it's going out of town or an ambulance if it's going out of town or somebody going over a wastewater, but a lot of, or a police vehicle doing a, um, a sector over that way. But a lot of DPW vehicles don't go that far in the highway division. So we'd have to go there and, uh, and see if they let us go on their their fuel pumps if we don't do that. If it fails and this doesn't if we go to default budget and it fails. I guess the point I'm trying to get is that it would cost us more to fund the development. Yes. We're asking them to do it. Yes. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. No. It's definitely a, a longer than a this year investment. Um, most tanks last at least 30 or are guaranteed for at least 30 years. I see, I see, uh, I see Mr. Uh, Councilor Koenig doing the uh, presentation about the, the budget. Particular. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we might volunteer him since he's not here. We might volunteer him for some other. Oh, um, there, there on the on that sheet that was handed out earlier, um, the number for the default budget is thirty five million three hundred eight twenty one. Right. That's the number, not the number that's printed on that sheet. The number is thirty five million three hundred eight twenty one. So. If somebody would, like, would to... like to make a motion on that corrected amount and move it to the town lot. I move the default budget of thirty-five million three hundred thousand eight hundred twenty-one dollars to the town warrant. Motion made by Tom Kenny, second by Bob Healy. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Zero zero. And just for public edification, this number now goes literally on the ballot. This cannot be adjusted at town meeting. This is the number going forward. This is the, the official default budget that will go on the town ballot. And, and really what I'm saying that for is I'm saying that for the new residents of Merrimack and the people at home because the, that number cannot be changed. Okay, now we're getting there. Review of the 23 town warrant. Now, this is where you have to be put up with my reading, unfortunately. You're going to read all that? Do I have to read this first part to the state of New Hampshire? Well, I'll give Paul a second. No. I know I have to read this stuff. Do I have to read to the state of New Hampshire page? To, yeah, um, to the inhabitants. Really, that is that is something. I'm sorry, it's up to the council what they want to do. You, you they can vote to, um, just mo recommend Article Two and then move to deliberative session. And uh, but I mean this introductory page. Do I need to read that? I'm I'm getting there. I'm sorry. I'm missing. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, you can, they can vote to just have that put into the minutes as being read, but skip you reading them if that's what you want to do. 
um, if the council wants that. to do that, or you can read the whole warrant. But the really, it's you're trying. The part of this agenda item is to put the recommendations on the warrant and move it to deliberative session <coughs> for further vote. So, are you talking the, all of the warrants, or just because just to be able to have? We need to be able to take some votes on the articles in terms of recommendations. So we do have to deal with a lot of the articles individually. Right. You would still individualize each article. It's still, you would suspend the reading and just include in the minutes. Ah, I'm okay if people want to suspend the reading. I'm also okay if they want to be read. I'm okay with you suspending the reading. Oh, that sounds good. Could we, we need a vote on that? Uh, yes. Would you like to make that as a vote, I, I Councilor the, Koenig? I move that we uh, move the wording of the warrant articles to the to the warrant as printed. Ah, thank you. Second. And second by um, Woods. If I had known that, I wouldn't have ached over this having to read it. I was just thinking, oh my God. Okay. Motion made by Tom Koenig, seconded by Lawrence Lawrence Lawn Woods. All those in favor say aye. 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 And see, now you know it's good that I didn't read it. I can't read really do this. Okay, 600. Zero, zero. Excellent. So now we'll just go through each warrant and do the recommendations. Yes, right. Ah, nice. Okay, Article 1 is obviously the uh, town officers. And just for the public to know, there are going to be two town councilors, three-year term, two library trustees, trustees for a three-year term, two ethics committee members for a three-year term, and one trustee of the trust funds for a three-year term. Okay, Article 2 has to do with the operating budget, and we need to make a vote on uh, a those. Move to recommend Article 2 operating budget and to move Article 2 to the deliberative session. And, that, and that's made by Tom Koenig, second by Barbara Healy. And this vote will be what we recommend, right? Is that what you said? Both, Tom, Tom combined I'll put both them together, them. so yeah. So Perfect. to make it to, Perfect. To get out of here a little quicker. Ah, That's okay. we're, we're going to get out of here before 10. Now. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So that's 600. Article 3 has to do with the appropriation uh, for the Capital Reserve Expendable Trust Funds. Move to recommend Article 3, the General Fund Capital Reserve Funds, to, and then to move Article 3 to the deliberative session. Second. Motion made by Tom Cady, second by Barbara Healy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Six, zero, zero. Article 4 has to do with the um, Sewer Infrastructure Capital Reserve Fund. Move to recommend Article 4, Wastewater CRF, to move Article 4 to the deliberative session. Yeah, not so easy, yeah, is it? Yeah. Okay, that motion one. made by Barbara Healy. <laughs> deliberative. By in Lawn Woods. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Six, zero, zero. Article 5 has to do with the cost of the collective bargaining unit uh, for... IAFF Local 2904. Motion. Motion made by, go ahead, Nancy. I'd like to uh, move to recommend Article 5 IAFFF contract and move Article 3 to the deliberative session. Article 4. Oh, what? Article 5. Yep. Didn't I say that? Oh, I'm to see if you read it. It's a good thing we're making this shorter. It's late. Uh, yeah, nine thirty. Uh, go ahead. Well, I'm just doing it again. Second. So, Did you get a second for that? Second. No, just <laughs> repeat it correctly. Okay, so go ahead. I'm going to move to recommend Article Five IAFF contract and move Article Three. Oh, Article Five. Why do I get all the mistyped? <laughs> to deliberative session. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Nancy Murphy. Seconded by. Second. Tom Koenig. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Six zero zero. And that's nope. Article six has to do with the 
Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, 91 Local 3657. Move to recommend um, Article 6, uh, collective bargaining agreement with American Federal and State, County, and Municipal Employees, 93 Local 3657, and move Article 6 to the deliberative session. Second. Motion made by Andy Hunter, seconded by Lon Woods. All those in favor say aye. 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 Six zero zero. Article seven is the collective bargaining agreement between uh, with the American Federation of State and County Municipal Employees, employees ninety three local two nine eight six. Go for it. Go for it. Turn it on. There you go. I move. Move to recommend Article Seven AFS. CME 2986 to the uh, recommended and move the article to the deliberative session. Second. Motion made by Lon Woods, second by Nancy Murphy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Six zero zero. And that is it. Yes, so we have our recommendations and motions. Uh, we'll be getting in touch with you. Um, to sign the state form MS 636, which is posted with the warrant. So we'll be getting in touch with you to come in over the weekend and uh, sign that. I don't believe we have that one. Do we? we don't have that one. We have to wait for the approvals and then we'll get it out to you. Um, the other thing is, is on the March 9th agenda, which is our two meetings from now, just think about which articles you want to talk about in deliberative session. Because we're going to be going yeah, over all that. Decision. We're going to be going all over that. So think about which ones you want to move and, and second um, for that meeting. Perfect. Perfect. The chairman's going to do the budget. Correct. So I Whether he wants to or not. But he always does, yeah. Okay, uh, minutes. We have two council meetings and three budget meetings. Now, Tom made a comment earlier. And I think I remember the same thing. The budget meetings were always identified as town council budget meetings, minutes. Mm -hmm. They're not now. Does it make a difference? Um, we could make that change. Um, we have a new minute keeper. Okay. So she so probably just... No yeah. She has she has a, a template and she probably just I understand. used the chart. Sure. So for a town, the, the January 12th meeting minutes... Is, was in fact a true town council meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. So we don't have to worry about that one. Okay, uh, motion. We move, move the January 12th minutes with changes. Motion made by Tom Koenig, seconded by? Second. Andy Hunter, changes, Tom? On page two, line 45, talks about a municipal engineering firm, which should be a firm. Maybe it was a firm. And on page 10, it talks about Chairman Koenig abstaining, but I'm not chairman. On line 7, I'm a counselor. Okay. Any That's other questions? Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve. And it would be with corrections, right? Mm -hmm. Tom Koenig and uh, somebody second. Andy. Andy, Andy Hunter. Okay, those in favor say aye. Aye. Six zero zero. Oops, six zero five zero one. And that's Barbara Healy abstaining. That's right, because you were not there. Okay. Now, the meeting for January 18th was a budget meeting, so that should be changed at the very top, town budget oh, meeting. Budget. Right. It's correct in the footer. Right. What's anyway. the... Uh... I'll move the minutes of January 18th as presented. Second. Motion made by Tom Koenig, second by Barbara Healy. Any changes, Barbara? On page two, line 22, sand, uh, salt and sand budget has been lowered for the next year in anticipation of their 
mag working? Uh, yeah, that's mag. I stopped mag getting is, any bells for me. Mag is a um, um, additive to the sand and salt. They put the mag on. You put a, the mag on it. Magnesium. Put magnesium on it. And it it uh, when it hits the ground, it it you don't have to use as much because it starts the chemical reaction. Do you want to pull more mag? Do we know if it stands for magnesium? Uh, I'll double check. I'll, I'll figure I'll out what it is. Uh, but I'm 99.9%. .9%, that's magnesium. But okay. yeah, Lori did say mag. Okay. Yeah, I probably did. 22. Anything else, Brad? Yeah. Okay. So with the potential correction, how's that? Anything else? Good Anyone review. else? Okay, the, all those in favor of the minutes with that potential correction, say aye. 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 Okay, and that was, everybody was here, 600. January 19th was also a council meeting, so that the heading, I'm sorry, budget, budget meeting. meeting, so the heading should say town council budget meeting minutes. Move the minutes of January 19th. Second. Motion made by Auntie Hunter, Hunter, seconded by Lon Woods. Any corrections, Barbara? Yeah, on page two, starting about line 40, the title is Summer Day Camp, but the following is when Mr. Kasparius was talking about adding the new after-school program and how he was going to have a position that had shared responsibility for that in daycare, I mean, the camp, summer camp. Do we want that broken out as a separate topic under summer day camp? Actually, if you're gonna break it out, it should say revolving fund. It should be what? Revolving fund. Oh, because that's what really it is. The day camp is underneath mm -hmm. the revolving fund. And that's really what he was talking about. He was talking about revolving fund and this new program that he was going to implement. But he does start the discussion of the new program on line 33. Yeah, it's still part of the revolving fund. Yeah, yeah. so I think the that's the place where the new subtitle has to be, maybe. So are you suggesting, Paul, that instead of summer day camp, it should be highlighted as revolving fund? It really, it's the revolving fund because it's all, it's summer day camp, it's the track. It's this new program mm -hmm. he's putting in that's all in the revolving fund. Is that okay with you, Barbara? Yes, as long as it's put uh, in between line 32 and 33. Because on line 33, it says he's discussing a new program they are looking to launch under the revolving fund. Okay, so on line 33 should be revolving fund, mm -hmm. and summer day camp should be a minute. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Did you get that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Anything else, Bob? Any other corrections? Okay, all those in favor of the minutes with the corrections, please say aye. Aye. 600. Zero, zero. Okay, January 25th. <laughs> also a budget meeting, so it should say town council budget meeting minutes. Move to approve the minutes of January 25th, 2023. Second. Who said second? Nancy, okay. Motion made by Auntie Hunter, uh, seconded by Nancy Murphy. Any changes? Tom? Um, on line 20 of page one, it talks about, uh, he talked with Jonathan Diaz in media about Office 365. I think Jonathan's in uh, information technology or something like that. So what is uh, the information? In IT. 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 Yeah. Information technology. It's not media, so that's all I had. Anyone else? Okay, let's move them. Uh, vote on the minutes as corrected. Those in favor say aye. 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 Six zero zero. Okay, January 26th was a regular town council meeting. Okay, 
Okay. I move January 26th, Town Council meeting minutes as presented. Motion made by Lon Woods, second by Barbara Healy. Corrections, Tom? Um, on page two, line 32, there's a whole bunch of bullets under the Sheegan River pedestrian trail, but that last bullet is actually an engineering study of wire road. It should be pulled out as a separate item. So just shift it to the left to make it another bullet. Gotcha. So it's a solid bullet, not... Right, instead right. of a sub-bullet. Any other? No, that was it. Barbara? On line 47, Merrimack... Same yep, same page. Okay. Page 2. Merrimack High School. High school should be capitalized. Yep. On page... Four, line 43, seconded by Councilor Healy to accept. Yeah. And the same over on page five, line eight, Councilor Murphy to accept. Yeah. And on line 25, Councilor Hunter to accept. And I'm done. Oh, Any others? Okay, all those in favor of the minutes with corrections say aye. Aye. Six zero zero. Not bad, guys. Not bad. Okay. Uh, comments from the press. Comments from the public. Hmm. Comments from the council. We're going to be, is it next week we have a meeting as well? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Said with such glee. Yes. Yes. Thank you for making it a very successful evening as well. Went quickly and expeditiously, let's put it that way. Okay. If the, the chair is ready. Chair is ready. We move, we adjourn. Second. Ooh, it's echoing it's here. Lon Woods, second by Barbara Healy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Good night, everyone.